<laughs> piggyback again. Um, something that we see that happens a lot in especially apartment buildings, especially in NYCHA buildings, is that people don't count everybody in the building because everyone's not on the lease. Um, and they're scared that if they report everyone who's actually in the household, that it would somehow be reported to NYCHA and they'll get in trouble. So just wanna reiterate and emphasize that the information that you provide to the census is confidential. And you should, as, you, as she just stated, you should count every person in the household, including babies, including people who are not supposed to be there technically on the lease, because they're not on the lease, include everyone. And she said, um, people are scared. People without green cards are scared. And we did have that problem 10 years ago. And, you know, I did some door knocking 10 years ago as well. And, you know, people did not, I went to nursing homes and um, undocumented folks did not want to fill out the census. But that question is no longer there. There's no reason to be scared about it. And I understand because I'm from Haitian descent. I have family members who are scared of the census. And I would not allow them to fill something out if I knew it would harm them. So I definitely understand. <laughs> So I, I was just curious if, if on the other side there's concern about maybe overcounting or fraudulent um, entries, if, if that has a negative impact. I think the best person to answer that is probably the representative from the, uh, the U.S. Census. Yes, so we, uh, we have parameters in place uh, that will measure if people are only counted once, only once in the right place. It happens a lot with children when people... Um, Mom and dad don't live together at the same household, and the child will stay at mom's house and dad's house, and then the parents want to claim the child depending on who claimed the child on their taxes. But census has nothing to do with taxes. You claim the child where they stay on April 1st of 2020. So wherever the child is on April 1st, 2020, that's, where, that's which parent puts the child on, down on the form. Uh, that's why we ask for the names. Uh, because we want to make sure uh, we can see if people are using, you know, similar, the same name, so then we'll know if someone is being double counted. Once you fill it out and you're counted, you're counted. <laughs> um, if you, it's not really like something where you just take yourself out of. Once you're living in this country and you fill it out, you're counted. It's a benefit for you. It's not going to harm you. Um, I don't know if you guys want to. Yeah, and I guess also just, to be clear, it's it's not a program, it's an accounting. It's an, an accounting of every single person. And that information is used to determine how many programs and what kind of programs you have in your community. So as, as you said, um, it's about all of us, like all of us being counted in the community, the strength in numbers. So it's not that an individual I mean, you get the benefit as an individual, but it's really the community that benefits when all of us are counted so that if it's, if it's clear that people in this community need SNAP programs or, or need tenant assistance, housing assistance, that they would get it based on the information in the census. Does that, does that make sense? And not to lose political seats. And it's also important for us to recognize that if we aren't counted, we lose political seats. Our politicians who fight for us and provide the resources in our communities. Um, good afternoon, my name is Shana Melius. I'm from Congresswoman Clark's um, office. And I just wanted to elaborate um, on the census and how important it is. So in 2010, um, they did the census and we lost two seats then. And so basically the main thing right now that they're trying to advocate um, throughout Brooklyn, Brooklyn is um, part of the hardest to count, but it's, I don't know if you've seen the map that's on uh, online, but it's super red. And that means that individuals like you or any, like myself might ha not have been counted in 2010. It's an extremely imperative that they do, meaning for trash pickup, for the parks. If you have a pothole in the middle of your street, um, those are things that the resources that are obtained from those areas. So the main thing is for us to complete the census. It's not necessarily a program. But the main thing is it's important that everyone counts. If you have someone that's visiting your house from 
another country and they might be here for a couple of months, still count them. Um, if you have someone that someone's home from college and they don't live with you, but they're there on April 1st, you have to count them. So that's the main thing that they really want to get across because the more people that we count, the better and the more resources that are available for us in the community. The representative from the Census Bureau just has a few words. Thank you. So I just want to add that um, while we are gearing up to count everyone, uh, we are also hiring people to be the enumerators. If you are interested, I can give you information on how to apply. The process is very simple. You don't need a, a resume. You don't need a cover letter. Uh, flexible schedules. You can work as little as 20 hours a week or as many as 40 hours a week. So you can do it a part-time, full-time. We start at $28 an hour. So it's a great way to um, make up maybe post-Christmas shopping or any other um, bills that you would like to pay off. Um, we are very flexible with people who are already working full time and would like to do it as an extra part time job or just want to um, do it while they're still looking for a job. Uh, the requirements are only that you have to be 18 years or older and a citizen. But if you do speak another language and you have a social security number, you should still apply and you'll be considered for employment as a translator with the enumerators. You have to be a citizen, but if you're not a citizen and you have a social security number, you should still apply. Yes, it's a federal job, so we do a background check as well. If you receive any benefits, uh, Medicaid, Medica uh, Medicare, SNAP, um, food stamps, or um, you live in a NYCHA building or Section 8, the census income won't affect your benefits. When you're applying for the job, you apply online, and when you do apply online, they you get like a confirmation number. So we've hosted a few of these uh, job fairs, and a lot of people are asking in regards to the status of their application. Just make sure when you do fill out the application online that you do uh, obtain your confirmation number so that you can go back and see the status of your application. So in closing, we want to once again thank you guys for coming out. We understand that uh, you know there may be a sense of fear or uncertainty, but there is a lot of support. Many folks here are either in our New Americans Welcome Center program, some are members as well. So the Y is your safe haven. Come to the Y. We will create a safe place for you to fill out the census. Tell your friends about it as well. We have computers here. There's multiple days where we'll let the community come in, and if there's times where it's even beyond that, we're here for you. Brooklyn Public Library is here for you as well. Uh, and there's multiple partners. So please make sure your voices are heard. Tell your friends and families. As, as I know it may, you may be afraid, but please don't be afraid because this matters much more. Uh, I want to take a moment to thank uh, our colleagues for being here from the Flatbush Tenant Co Coalition, Delta Sigma for being here as well. Uh, all of our colleagues from the association office, thank you so much for your help. My staff in the back, thank you guys for helping out as well. Brooklyn Public Library, thank you guys so much for being here as well. Uh, Brooklyn Free Speech, thank you guys so much for uh, filming and, and, and taking care of us as well. Uh, thank you guys all so much for being here, to engage in this important conversation, and enjoy the rest of the day.
pin somebody? Good. Yes, I will pin. Now, Zoe, hi, Anna. Uh, we're still working a few things out coming in. Um, uh, could I get, will not be stand-ins right now to stop video. I need two people to stop video, Ro or Leslie or, um, but uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm, so now we're going to have um, Brian pinned and I'm going to minimize that. Move that over. So, let's see. Then that's going to go to this queue. Tell, uh, um, I have a I have a keyboard shortcut. Um, I was working with yesterday this morning. Um, I'm going to be working out of the computer tomorrow, and um, I had a keyboard shortcut uh, working with that uh, was working for that, and it's not working the keyboard, so I, uh, I might be a little clunky. Okay, guess, but. Well, um, Remember, we can communicate with uh, Marcus um, that you're about to make a, a, a pin or a switch, and then he can go to the, the splash page, whether it be the Brick TV lower or um, what's the other thing you have for us? Uh, that and we can slate, you know, real quickly. Which one you can do that? Uh, right. It's working for the network. Make it a little funky. Yes. Remember, we can communicate with. I think Naomi's got a motion graphic that we can use, and you know, like a loop maybe, and we could have that active. That might be nice. Which one's that? She hasn't made it yet, I have heard, but uh, Ro is. Uh, is that in the works? She's making a. Oh, motion no, graphic. we have the we rolling graphics. No, oh, like a motion graphic. Did wouldn't she animate? No, she was making the animated polling graph. Oh. Um, yeah, so we have a slate that Amanda created, the old, like, just kind of like to rest on and to trend um, uh, in between, you know, parts. But we don't have a, a motion graphic for uh, for lower thirds or anything like that. We the, There is an on the polling graphics, on each of the graphics. Okay. But that's the only have. Um, and those have loaded into the um, graphics folder. I believe at this point we have all assets except credit provision, and I'm about to um, what so that Amanda can upload that. We I uploaded the most recent credits. Okay, cool. If there's any change, walk it out. I would love it if someone would uh, reach out to Fred Brown and see if he could uh, jump. Does That's anyone? Him. You always like to put the stress test on. Yes. Um, with that, we haven't seen the second ASL member yet. We haven't seen Debbie yet. Marcus, have you? Do you have have her yet? Yeah, I'm no, sure. I'm getting those assets in. Okay, okay. So for the uh, standings that are following us, oh, hello, Fred. I'm going to stop my now. Um, just uh, so everyone understands what you're doing, um, if you look at the chat, uh, you, can take a, you can pop up a YouTube of uh, what we are sending out as we navigate to having um, an ASL, uh, two ASL printers, um, that we're punching in here. So thanks everyone for standing by. Um, and this is what we're, this is where we are right now. Uh, while Marcus is working on this, um, I'm glad that uh, see we have all of our stand-ins here. I wonder if everyone got an opportunity to view. I sent out who I have standing in, uh, in what roles. Once again, we have Amanda standing in at Adams. Uh, Zoe, you'll be standing in for Mahogany Brown. Cat is Michelle De La Uz. Uh, you are Jose Albino, once again. Uh, Jonathan Ray Gomez, Amanda again, you're Randy Pierce, and Anna Ilya Lopez. So, um, um, so as Fred goes, or as, as Brian goes through that, we, um, those will be, he might call out you guys, those will be those roles for you guys. Does anyone want me 
to repeat any of that? Does anybody have that? Okay. Um, can I just jump in here and just call something to version, which is probably already obvious, and I'm sure you're already working on it. Whenever we do the polling, if we can make sure that, um, like, Brian is full screen, because it looks like we're kind of steps on like multiple um if it's in the grid so get to polling what we'll want to do is we'll want to pin brian and uh yeah i'm just asking there could be a notion i'm just noticing that the graphics are um uh pretty large they're taking up a lot of realism yep. on the screen humongous the graphics for the polling the boxes? Yeah. I mean, they look great, but yeah, if we can just, I'm just saying, if, I'm just asking if we can make sure that, you know, kind of as a solution, and there could be a better thing. Yeah, in the HD 16 by 9 world, they're huge. <laughs> they're that possibly we have Brian full screen. Well, so what would the traffic be for that, guys? Because, Ref, I, I thought you were going to have that reaction. Um, that's a lot of switching for you uh, on the fly, right? Yes. So I think what we'll 